Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to vidIQ, where today we're going to be taking a look at your channels. Yes, that includes you, maybe, because the forum already has hundreds of channel submissions. It happens every week. We do our best, though. We do our best to get to as many channels as possible. We can do our best to get to a variety of channels as well. So if you don't get picked, at least you can take some notes and see what some other channels have got going on so you can learn from them as well. Uh, before we get started today, why don't we do a quick poll? I love doing this. I'm going to start a poll in the YouTube chat right now. Is this your first vidIQ live stream? We'll just say live stream. And yes or no. Let me know. And, uh, you know, if it's if it's not your first time here, be sure to do your best to welcome those of, those of us who are new to the live stream. Because you're going to get a lot out of this. Uh, that is the plan. And as I said, take notes. Uh, it's going to be a good one for the next two hours. We'll be looking at channels, but before we do that, and as you answer this poll, let's welcome in Rob. What's going, Rob? Hey, everybody! Welcome back once again. That <laughs> button didn't work. Brilliant! I always like it when I have technical problems, which means I should use this button instead. <laughs> at least that one works. <laughs> How you doing, Dan? I'm, What's the plan? I'm great. Uh, we're gonna we're going to play video games. <laughs> I, awesome! Brilliant! I, yeah. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I'm I tricked everybody into coming to a channel review live stream, but instead we're gonna play video games. I love trolling people during the live stream. This is brilliant. What game are we gonna play? Um, we'll look at channels. People are gonna get mad. I think I think people are gonna not. <sighs> no, I'm joking. Because especially Fair because enough. I would say yeah, it is 34 percent right now. Say they are new to this live stream. Oh, hello, hello. There you go. It worked hey. this time. Welcome. Welcome, new people. And and not old people, but original gangsters, people who've been on the stream for years and years and years. Yes. You know who you are. So, the way this works, well, we have a tutorial. A refresh tutorial. Oh, here we go. We're, we're all over the place today. <laughs> we're good. We're good. Uh, we have a tutorial for you. It's only about 30 seconds long. Uh, this is how this live stream works every single week. Welcome back, creator. Here we go again. This is your weekly YouTube channel audit live stream. All you need to do is use the correct link in the description, fill out the form, and we'll consider your channel for review. That's right, channel reviews are free, but you can send us a super chat and watch us discuss your question live on air. You can get a channel audit anytime you want by downloading vidIQ and asking our AI coach to give you one, or take your channel to the next level with one-on-one -on -one coaching for your channel from a human coach here at vidIQ. If you submit your channel for review, expect the following. We will share with you our knowledge, experience, and passion as fellow YouTube creators. Thank you to all of our moderators who do an awesome job every single week. You know who you are. And now it's over to you. What have you got this week? And with that, um, we are ready to start. A couple quick notes. Uh, you can find the link to one-on-one -on -one coaching down below, as well as all of our vidIQ tools. You're going to see all kinds of fancy stuff on the screen, like this up here. And as we're searching for videos, you're going to see all kinds of stuff pop up. Uh, we may even bring up the vidIQ dashboard at times to kind of show you some stuff. So if you want these tools, you can absolutely try them for free. Uh, the links are down below. Just go to vidIQ.com. Get yourself the Firefox, the Chrome, the Edge browser extension, whatever you use, and uh, check them out. And is there anything else? I'm glad somebody noticed because I was working <laughs> on that all morning. Needs a bit of tweaking. I'm testing out a new lav mic and there was quite a bit of echo there, wasn't there? So hopefully by this time next week, I'll have resolved that issue. But I don't think there is anything else other than that, Dan. I think it's time to start auditing channels. Cool. All right. So I'm going to go to the channels that submitted almost first on the form. Uh, a lot of channels that have been previously audited submitted and so i kind of skip past those i don't even know if i skip past all the ones that are previously submitted honestly <laughs> um there's just a lot of you this time so uh we're gonna see a few interesting channels here the first one on the non-gaming form was k4 cubing with over a thousand subscribers it's a cubing channel approaching 200 subscribers they have 400 videos um but i would say they've seen some uh pretty interesting success one of our tools here the outlier tool is already pointing out videos that have kind of gone above and beyond for the channel, uh, which is always really cool to see. And what a, uh, what a great tool that is just to get like a snapshot, isn't it? Like whether somebody's finding um, frequent success, which this channel clearly is, 
over the videos that they're publishing. But what it also suggests is they're not publishing consistently enough because this is all content from the last six months. Unless they're a shorts channel. I, I Have we established that, Dan? I don't think they submitted as a shorts channel, but I, well, now I'm forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they have some really even the, so the most popular short yeah. is over 100,000 and then even even their newest short is 4,000 so it looks like they are making good use of shorts I would say agreed very much so um, so by the way tools like the outlier tool this is the kind of stuff that we as creators here at vidIQ find helpful and uh, that's why you see tools like this pop up because we're just like hey what if there was a thing and here it is <laughs> so uh, yeah let's see Rob first impressions of their long form content you know what jumps out to me on this um, channel, just right out of the gate, is the very first thumbnail. Yes. And I think it jumps out at me because it's very much a YouTube channel growth style, you know, with a graph pointing one way or the other. But they've managed to augment that. It's a lovely word, that augment. Mm. Into a cubing channel. And then with the big statement word, like if you're going to have text, have it make an impact on the thumbnail. And this clearly does. They're stating that some sort of speed run, I guess, from cubing is faked. And it looks as if the channel's been rewarded uh, for that with some decent views. So I think this is uh, creates a classic curiosity loop uh, in, the, in the person's eyes. It does lack, a, I guess, a bit of cubing theme to it. So like somebody would probably have to see the thumbnail to catch their attention and then read the title to get the full context. So yeah, I think, Dan, if you look at the thumbnail, there is kind of like a very faded out cube in the background. And with like the opacity is set to like 10% or something. So you can just see in the top of the thumbnail, uh, this cube. Um, but I mean, that's cool. You click on it and he's thrown up a cube up and down. So like immediately you're getting a sense that it's going to be a cubing video as well. So I think there's a lot of good things going on with this channel. And yeah, as you open it up, some nice editing. You know, they haven't quite set up a studio yet, but that's not a problem. The editing's cool. Some some nice zooming in, zooming out. Lots of pattern interrupts. That looks cool as well. So yeah, in terms of a, a cubing channel and how they're presenting to the audience, I think this is all thumbs up from me. Yeah, uh, there's there's a few videos that are not doing as well, um, and I do think it comes back to thumbnails. I think their thumbnail strategy right now is interesting. They're trying a lot of experiments, and some are better than others. So the one I'm in particular like going to pick on for a minute is this one here, this third one. This is the real world's fastest speed cube. Now, I get when I when I read the title and I stare at it for a minute, I get what you're implying. You're implying that someone's going to solve the Rubik's cube very fast, but Based on the thumbnail, it looks like the fastest time someone could get pitching a speed cube, just and and you know like a baseball, <laughs> and that is a bit of a disconnect, right? Like you see a cube, and that's good, and you see the miles per hour, but I would have rather have seen like hands that look blurry and like held up in a first person perspective, and the cube like is being adjusted, but you've you blurred the hands to make it look like they're moving quickly, kind of like you did with this effect where the cube is flying through the air. I think that would have demonstrated, you could have still had the miles per hour, but that would have demonstrated someone solves a Rubik's cube at this speed, you know, and it's that those visual cues, I think really help people click on the video. Cause it does literally look like somebody is going to throw a Rubik's cube as fast as they can. And that's not what you do with those. And so people are just going to go maybe laugh a little bit and keep scrolling. Yeah. I've also noticed another, what you might call a stutter stop in a viewer's brain when it comes to the comprehension. The one to the right, the coolest speed cube, I'll try again. The coolest speed cube that you ever did see, <laughs> ever did, it kind of like you're reversing the words there. It just makes me have to stop to read the title a little bit more. I mean, the video still did well. I'm just yeah. wondering if you were trying to be a, a bit too clever with the wording there. And obviously with the title and the thumbnail, your goal is to just grab that viewer literally and say, come in here, get, get in the video. And maybe that was just a, a, a slight hesitation or oh, a pause moment. But I mean, generally, Dan, yeah. this channel it seems to be doing very well with their content. Just a usual thing for me. I say this probably every single week, at least once. Commit to consistency. And we have three videos over the last three weeks, and then there was a big gap. I'm wondering, are you only able to work on this channel in between school? 
just looking mm. at the creator and their age and like we've just had Easter and then three months ago was Christmas. Is that a challenge for you? And how can you do your best to batch create content a little bit more? Yeah. Uh, concepts are going to be my piece of advice for this creator. Uh, sometimes they have an awesome concept that works out really well. And sometimes, the, you know, it needs a little work. So I, I think the ones like this is a great example, like the antithesis of the thumbnail up here is this one right here where you have this, uh, you know, slow and you're pointing at the the record. This person's obviously very excited and you're, I think, accusing them of, of not even being fast enough. Like there's already a lot of intrigue here. So it, this paints a, a picture. And then the next one, should you listen to music while cubing? I, has anyone ever asked that question before? Um, it, it's kind of like a, maybe there's some interesting insights in here, but I think a lot of people can't relate to it. And that's why this one isn't getting as many clicks. So you could have just said like the worst thing you could do while cubing and then had like the same thumbnail. And now it's like, wait, okay, listen to a podcast or something. Like what, what's, what's, why is the arrow pointing at some headphones? And there's a little more like of a question mark over that. And people can maybe consider clicking on it because it's curiosity. So keep working on the concepts of your videos. I think that's really what's going to set you apart. I love to see how you're implementing speed cubing and challenges. There were a number of cubing channels that submitted today that I found just by, I usually when I go to the forum, I just type in random numbers and I'm just trying to find channels that stand out to me. And I found three cubing channels, including this one today. <laughs> so it's, it's a very, very popular niche and you're standing out in a pretty big way. This channel is doing very, very good compared to a lot of channels we've audited on this channel about cubing. So. Spring must be the cubing season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's that's when all the new cubes come out. It's kind of like the iPhones for, uh, <laughs> for, for fall. Uh, all right. We'll go to our first gaming channel now that's submitted. Uh, it is DC Racing. And this is one where I'm like, did they submit before? I don't know. It's still a pretty cool channel either way. Uh, so we'll check it out. They are a gaming channel, but they're specifically targeting racing simulator setups. And as I scroll down a little bit, it does seem, yeah, it does seem like we've looked at this channel before, but they have some more recent content now. So we can kind of see how their channel's doing. Uh, I don't know when we audited this channel, so I can't say that we are going to take credit for anything here. I do remember this thumbnail though. Um, and this is their obvious, obvious outlier before you buy, watch this. Um, uh, could have been perfect. Something, something, something. So these certain pedals, 10,000 views. Like, I think these really expensive high ticket items are bringing you a lot of viewers, which is great to see. But also, um, I, I meant to say big ticket, also just expensive. <laughs> expensive. This is kind of a tech channel when you think about it. I don't know if you had anything to jump in on with that. Um, <laughs> I'm still kind of taking in some of the newer content. Qu quantity of um, content might be a bit of a challenge for this yeah. channel. Um, given that their sole focus appears to be steering wheels for driving video games. And in particular, whatever this device is, I guess it's a steering wheel feedback accessory. Yeah. And it's called what, a CSL. Maybe all that's the company. I don't know. Um, but when they do release content, Dan, it all, every single video here gets more views and subscribers. Like you're looking at the outlier tool, which says like 0 0.4 and 0 0.7 for these last two videos. That means that the views for these videos are not getting as many as they usually would. And yet these numbers are still much higher than their subscription size, which tells me that YouTube is consistently finding the right audience and or a new audience for this very specific sub niche and YouTube wants more of this content to serve to the audience. Maybe this creator thinks that they just can't flood YouTube with all of these steering wheel accessory review um, videos. And I would argue that the, the data here seems to suggest otherwise, that they can make more videos on this topic. And if they wanna go even deeper into this niche, then they should do. And like there's some really cool shots here uh, really considering the angles that they um, shoot on the steering wheel and like a bit of lighting and this sense of motion and steering all looks, I mean, that lighting looks pretty cool. I love yeah. it. Um, and then these visual effects are all nice. It, it sounds like obvious advice and strategy, but let's do more. Let's, how can you um, 
commit to doubling the output. So if we go back to the channel, Dan, is it roughly one video every two? Well, you see, look, look these latest videos, one month, three months, four months. Yeah. Uh, for me, I would be saying, can you not do two videos a month as a starting point? You know, up until June, that will be six videos. Yeah. Because the channel could do with more. Otherwise, I would say this channel could stay within this niche for four to five years, not exhaust it, but not realize that they have a potential to broaden out their channel and their audience if they make more content. Yeah. My my thing is like because they're probably thinking there's just not a lot of products. This is such a niche space, you know. Not a lot of people are gonna set aside this much room for something like this in their home. So this is kind of similar to people who cover a lot of VR content. They'll they'll go and get the expensive devices and stuff, but there's probably an expectation that their audience isn't going to go out and buy one of those contraptions that you put in your home and you can you can run on, but it's just like a running in place device, kind of like a, a treadmill, but not a treadmill. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff for VR, and this reminds me of that a lot, but it's such a, a specific hobby. And so I kind of wonder, there's a couple different things I'd be trying with this as this channel, if they were interested in making more content. I would try to brainstorm a video that is not necessarily a product review in the sense that I'm going to review this with the expectation that people are thinking of buying it. You could look at some of those VR channels and see the other types of content that they make, um, where it's a review, but it's kind of in this in from the perspective of someone who's just fascinated by this technology. They may, they're probably not in any position to buy it right now, but they're like, that's still cool, you know. Maybe there's also opportunities for like the people who do buy this equipment. If I'm wrong, and like you know, I just want to target people who want to buy this stuff. What about flight sims? Like, there's got to be other types of simulators beyond racing. If they are setting aside this kind of space in their home, then they're probably interested in other similar products for different types of games like microsoft flight simulator um i don't know if they still make them but i know there was a time where someone was making like yokes and stuff for planes and yeah. so it's like a similar setup could a racing setup be converted into something like that i don't know but this channel would be my go-to place for something like that yeah it's kind of an and or idea from me dan in that yeah you could try maybe these somewhat obscure strange ideas like can i fly a Boeing 747 with this steering wheel. Or you could take the most popular driving games and attach it to these steering wheels. Like how does Grand Theft Auto V <laughs> online work with this steering wheel? Ooh, you could or, do challenges where you play games that don't, yeah. Yeah, uh, can I complete um, Zelda Breath of the Wild <laughs> uh, with this steering wheel? Might be another one. Or um, can I um, play, what's the most popular Android game? Is it Asphalt 8? Like, every, there's, there's dozens of channels that play Asphalt 8. Or Forza, or Gran Turismo. A, a, a lot of um, graphics card channels attach performance, like frames per second on Fortnite or another shooting game. Can you attach some sort of uh, equity of performance of the steering wheels to the most popular driving games? Because right now, these are solely focused on the, the tech, and not necessarily on the software that's going to use these use this tech. So that might be more uh, content in terms of ideas for the channel. Yeah, there's there's a lot of different places they could go. The other thing that I'd be curious about, but this might get too far outside of their niche, but maybe something for the future. Um, maybe it's because I was just going through this, but I just bought this controller. And the only reason I bought this controller is because I saw a YouTube video. And this is very similar to... It's, it's just the same space, right? We're all trying to find ways to play games on our PCs, a little more comfortable. This one's cool because it's a Nintendo Switch controller that works on the PC. I've had terrible luck with my actual pro controller. So I wanted a very specific product and I found one. And, you know, a YouTuber was the one that told me, hey, that, this one's kind of cool. So could you eventually broaden out to that space where you're looking for other products that people who have like a gaming rig are looking to enhance? I don't know. Uh, there's, there's, I feel like there's a lot of places you could take this, but we are mostly focused right now, Rob, on just the sheer amount of content on this channel. It's not a lot. Mm. And it, it seems like the limitation might be the production quality is very, very high. Uh, that could certainly be a limitation, but I have to imagine these products do not release very often. They're, they're yeah. so niche. Uh, and I, I would argue that I think this channel can do more than one video a month, which looks to be the current cadence. I, I suspect it's an ideas um, challenge where they think, 
well, I've done, I've, I've reviewed the steering wheel now. I don't want to just review it again. And like, you don't have to, you can find other ways to sell the, the experience and your passion for this hardware, uh, with, with more videos, which is with a slightly different angle. Um, it's been done many times before people have like, you look at all of the mouse and keyboard channels, uh, true. They are looking at a lot more products that are available, but they'll have these kind of weird and wacky ideas and as well. And I think there's opportunities to copy those ideas, but inject it into your steering wheel technology um, channel, which I think is probably almost one of a kind on YouTube. Yes. Uh, so we have a lot to get through today. We are only just getting started, but we need to check out the sheer amount of memberships and super chats today is, is just, it's getting out of hand. We just got 50 gifted memberships from gray ghost gamers. Um, that's bonkers. You don't need to be doing that. <laughs> I don't know how to shoo. Wow. You, when I'm sitting here and you do something like that, it's so <laughs> awkward. <laughs> it doesn't the the it's like so imbalanced because I'm just like what do I what do I do with my hands? <laughs> so I kind of have to do this then. So it would be like, uh, hang on, this is, this requires some some thought now, doesn't it? There you go. Yeah, now I can just do whatever I need to. <laughs> um, Greg Ghost Gamers, thank you so much. Completely unnecessary. Uh, very very kind. Enjoy your emotes, everybody who just got a gifted membership, which is many of you. Uh, and then we have some memberships that were not gifted uh, from Cre Creative. Uh, I'll stop there because I probably already butchered this new member. I don't know if you want to. There you go. That's that's a unique sound effect, by the way. Every, everybody who becomes a member during a live stream gets a sound effect that they can use for the rest of this live stream. Uh, so me, Lotto, became a member. Oh, that was sinister. Yeah. Uh, Kidda Kidda became a member. Names are they're they're not going easy on me today. Uh just for the weekend van life. Oops, I get subs. Button, sorry. But watch time doesn't improve. Interesting. Um what do you think? So this is the classic conversation about how subscribers typically are a means to an end for milestones and requirements and vanity but not necessarily building a community. Uh, so focus on uh, the best contents that naturally follows on from content you've made previously. And if you ask for subscribers, you may get them, but that doesn't, that's not a promise of future watch time. So let's, I guess, celebrate and um, celebrate, you know, internally, yourself cool i've got some more subscribers but you know externally to your audience you've got to figure out how to keep viewers coming back mm -hmm. and in that case subscribers are, are less valuable to you and then from just for the weekend van life i get subs but watch time doesn't improve uh, they submitted twice okay <laughs> uh that really, that really <laughs> free me then <laughs> Chief Psychology 101, thank you for all your tips and suggestions. Gain 200 subscribers and only need 303 hours for 500 of the three out of 3,000 watch time. Hey, congrats. You're almost at stage one monetization. Nice Congratulations. Work. Mark Holmes, thank you for the IQ for the tips. Help me get over your 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> Jeez, hang on, hang on. I'm here to tell look, look, you right wrong, now. Wrong <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Uh, it's be, that, that, I can't do two things at once, Dan. It just doesn't help. It doesn't work. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, I, I, I've added a lot more memes. <laughs> this yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, they're so, overlapping. Yeah, like, uh... you serious? I am serious. I've added a lot more memes this week. Okay. So, yeah. Um, Mark, you did that. Uh, but thank you. We appreciate the super chat. We appreciate you saying that. Um, so best of luck to you on 200,000 subscribers. Design Burst. Uh, we're using Eleven Labs AI Voice from its voice library. Can you consider? Do you, can you consider it as generic text to speech, or consider it a clone? Or is it considered a clone of someone else's voice? Mm. That's a good question because it's relevant to the new rules that are coming from YouTube. Mm. The way I understand it is, if you use what you might call a template or generic voice from the library at Eleven Labs, I would say yes, that is fine. That is text to speech. No problem using it. However, 
If you um, go and get an Obama-like clone voice or a Donald Trump clone voice, or if you clone my voice, the voice of a real person, then you are essentially uh, <laughs> taking um, the attributes of the real world and trying to maybe subvert it into the sense that this person in real life said these things on my behalf for my channel. And I managed to hold it together there because Dan, you started laughing and I couldn't work out why. You said if you took, you mentioned two presidents and then you said, or a real person like <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like super main character syndrome there. Uh, or you could do a real person like me and that would yeah, be yeah. wrong. Um, yeah, I, I am an advocate for getting somebody to help you with a clone voice. And that way you have like permission from a real person and, and it's going to sound more unique uh, if you're going to do voice cloning. Oh man, Gib, happy Tuesday to you. Thank you for being here for 10 months as a member. Uh, David and Kim said, vids getting views, but not subscribers. Analytics say most people watch on TVs. I assume more friction to sub from a TV. Ah, that's fair. What do I do? Should I care? This is the, the opposite problem to the super chats from the first person. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I guess it is a lot more of a passive experience on television. People are sat back. We're not really wanting to engage much. They just want to watch videos. Press, press on a video and then leave leave it for 20 minutes. Um, so I guess, should I care? Yes and no. If you are working towards monetization or some requirements that need, need you to unlock um, something, then you may want to do like a 15 minute segment in your video. Like let's say you're six, seven minutes into the video. And so that you know that the viewers are really engaged. You would make this kind of unique um, pitch to them in that, hey, I know you're watching on a TV. And guess what? You're really causing problems for me. Because if you watch <laughs> on a TV, you don't press on the subscribe button. And that means I can't reach my goal of a thousand subscribers to monetize my channel and put that money back into a channel to help you with your viewing experience. So I'm just asking you for this small favor to subscribe if you think this content is valuable. I mean, YouTube will recommend it anyway, but it's benefiting me. You know, I, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I just that just came off the top of my head how you might pitch it. But yeah, but, if but you're you getting could... a lot of views from television, that is an interesting question about a uh, lack of engagement. You could also get some get some B-roll of you subscribing on a TV and use that to show people yeah, how yeah. easy it is. There's probably yeah. there's probably a sub button. I assume there's a sub yeah. button on televisions, but uh, mm -hmm. if you're watching on TV right now, let us know. Um, we'll probably not see your message, but you can let us know anyway. T M D A I channel. Send us a super chat of, of some amount of money. Um, <laughs> 49,000 somethings. That's something. incredible. Yeah, thank you. Um, Is it Dogecoin um, <laughs> currency? It does maybe. look like a little, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Tis a Wizza says, your ideas about remaking a video, including transcript in Spanish, hopefully going out to Central South America, new channel. Sorry, am I not understanding the question? I think what they're saying is, if I remake this video in a different language, should okay. I put it on a new channel? I think. At this time, you probably should. Um, YouTube. Yes. <laughs> YouTube is talking about, in the future, we don't know when, a tool that will do this natively in a video. So you could basically have a dubbed version in another language on the same exact video. But who knows when that's happening, if that's still happening. It's something they talked about a while ago. They partnered with some other company, and we never heard about it again. So I would do a second channel. That's that's what we did, and uh, it's worked very well. VidIQ en Espanol. Yeah, Hobbs says, I've grown an audience on my channel through long-form reaction content. I want to start streaming through gaming and just chatting with fans. Should I start a new channel for streaming? Hmm. <laughs> Are, if you're not doing any reactions and you're just doing gaming, it feels like a new channel to me. Yeah. But also live streams, there's a lot of people who stream whatever and make their videos about a very specific topic or mm -hmm. have a, a very specific through line. So it's kind of up to you. It depends on what your goals are. It's a bit similar to sometimes channels have success with longs and shorts, but the shorts and the longs are kind of have almost have a, a diff, compl completely different audience. I would say that you are probably have license and permission to just test this uh, to see what happens because, you know, one live stream that doesn't get many viewers because you're doing an experiment will not crash the channel or it shouldn't do. Um, 
But starting a brand new channel and live streaming does have its challenges because depending on how you do it, you may not even be able to live stream. Like if you try and live stream on a mobile device, you need 50 subs if you're doing it directly from your phone. If you're doing it on desktop, you need to ask permission and wait 24 hours and all that type of jazz. Yeah. Um, all right, best of luck. We have a couple more, and we're gonna get back to channel reviews here. Turn up the tranquility says, or became a member, so thank you. Shots fired! Shots fired! And then oh, some shots there. Tranquility. MV Cuddy Stories says, how important are subtitles for non-English channels? You can answer this question yourself by looking at the demographics and saying, let's say you have a uh, English channel. But there's a lot of people watching from Spanish countries, like Spanish-speaking countries, Mexico, Spain, Colombia. I think that's a Spanish-speaking channel. Uh, if there's a, enough of a audience trying to engage with your content, but it's English isn't their first language, it might be worth doing that. But also, like captions, subtitles for people who want to watch your videos but are on a bus and it's very loud so they can't hear it, or or people who are hard of hearing and they just want to be able to get captions. There is a value, but it also comes at a cost to you, whether it's time or money. And you've got to decide on that trade-off. Yeah. Uh, the, so we'll stop the super chats there, but there are more coming in. We will get to them a little bit later on, but we do need to go back and start auditing some more channels. And the next channel up is going to be Kiwi Modulars. They're a Lego channel uh, with 12,000 subscribers and uh Ooh. quite a bit of content looks like they're also on a maybe like a one a month kind of cadence their last video is i moved my massive lego collection um which was pretty cool actually i did watch a bit of this because i was just curious I, I wanted to see if they were going to make the decision to break down the sets or try and move them uh you know in boxes at fully assembled and spoiler alert they did try and move them in boxes fully assembled which i thought was very interesting what did you very risky from from my own experience yeah how did that work uh so uh i tried to ship the avengers heli carrier carrier which is three and a half thousand pieces across continents by the time it arrived at its destination it was now it was more like 1700 pieces <laughs> Re required quite a big rebuild oh man That's gotta be uh, and, harder and than... one of the star destroyers i had was a total loss oh no <laughs> Because <laughs> I'd lost the instruction booklet as well, so oh yeah, we put it back together. You can find that online. Uh, not for the type of Lego I sometimes buy. <laughs> oh okay. Uh, well, uh, so this is a very interesting channel with a very small handful of videos. Considering how many videos they have, I guess a bunch of these are shorts, and how many subscribers. Very very healthy views on their first video. Imagine getting a hundred thousand views in your first video and five hundred thousand views in your second video. Mm. Uh, what what they like to do are modular buildings. So these require like a, a lot of extra skill because it's not just oh, I'm going to build from the instruction manual. As I understand it, these buildings are like a lot of their own customizations. You know what I mean? And this one looks like it's teasing Seinfeld, Avengers, Friends, and Big Bang Theory, and then some other show in one building. That's a really cool idea. So I know some of these sets because I have the Friends um, Central Perk build and I've also got um, The Office, although I don't think that would fit into that one. But there's also the friends with the two um, um, apartments. So the, the, I, I presume they've got those separate uh, Lego bits, but then, as you said, Dan, modulated them together to create this um, apartment building, which is such a cool idea. You know, I think what sold that video was the idea. Yeah. And, and you'd get the idea from the thumbnail, uh, which is a, a thing of beauty, I would say. Nice yeah. job. This is a channel I genuinely want to come back and, and watch on my own time. Uh, just because even if I'm not going to do this stuff for myself, it's not just, oh, I'm going to build some Lego sets. Like, they're taking it to the next level. And I think this is a good lesson for anybody making content, uh, especially content in a crowded space. You'll find that a lot of people who are in the Minecraft space, for example, are always trying to figure out a new way to take Minecraft and take it to the next level. I can't just play Minecraft. Everyone's done that. What can I do that's a little bit different? So there are Lego channels that just review sets, but the ones that I get pushed the most, I'm most interested in watching right now, are these ones that that take maybe a build you could buy at a store and then they customize it. And I've learned through watching these types of videos that there are websites you can go to where people have kind of like come up with, you know, okay, so if you wanted to build this for yourself, 
this creator, if they in, if they invented this concept, could go on a website and then basically put all of the pieces in a list, and you can buy the extra pieces, and you could buy the Lego set at the store, and you could then replicate this build. But you'll have this really custom build that isn't sold in stores when you're done. And the the community around something is like what is really driving a channel like this. I think so. Props to them, and props to any channel who does this kind of work. I think. Again, this is a case of like, if you look at this channel and you're like, well, why don't they have more views on their like latest videos? I think these will all get views well into the future. And I think this channel could continue blowing up. They already, with 12,000 subscribers and a dozen or so videos, this channel is going to hit 100,000 subs well before it hits 100 videos minus shorts. I'm sure they're doing a lot with shorts right now. Oh, that's a bold claim by that by Dan there, but yeah, we'll see, we'll, we'll see. Um <laughs> I had a thought, if we go back to the long form videos, and can you just click on the modular one, the, the one with half a million views at the bottom? I'm hoping our tool can maybe tell us when it took off. Oh, look at that. It got a second wind. So, yeah, so it, got, it, it took off fairly, fairly quickly when it was launched, and then it got a second boost, which is cool. And if you go back to the rest of the videos, I'm just trying to build a story of this channel from what I can see. And what I see is that for the first three or four videos, it felt like the stories they were telling were stories about this, this cool idea of modular Lego builds. And then if you look at the one which tanked, comparatively speaking, which was the most valuable Lego sets I own, it felt like it was a bit of a shift from the passion of of, of the Lego idea to my personal interest and biggest sets and whatever. Like, and another one, how I moved my mess, massive Lego collection. And it could it be, Dan, that the audience just weren't that invested in the creator's own personal stories and journeys, mm -hmm. at least in the pitch? Because, you know, the content could be very different. The ones about the modular builds could still be like very personal stories. But the pitch is kind of pitched to the, the larger Lego community. And I'm just wondering if that is, you know, subtle shift in their content. That, but that's had a, quite a big impact on how uh, welcoming the content is to the audience. It's definitely like two different types of content, right? Like you have those more personal stories. All of them filmed very well, by the way. And then you have these ones that are way more custom and are probably way higher concept and take a lot longer to make and produce. And I don't think there's anything wrong with taking a break from those and trying some other stuff that's a little bit lighter on production. But it does look like you are bringing in an audience to, still to this day that is expecting more super hyper customized builds. And you got to think like there's channels out there like yours that are delivering on that. There, there are channels that rebuild Lego sets all the time, and they they have massive dedicated spaces in their homes that they just build whole cities, and they all have custom buildings, and every one of those little buildings could be its own video, and then you could do tours of the whole city as it develops, and so you're competing against a, kind of a, a big, <laughs> you know, that's kind of a big hurdle to clear, which is why like when your content clears a barrier to entry. Um, yes, you get a lot of views, but then like, you, how do you keep leveling up? Because now you're in a whole new ballpark. And I do think this creator is knocking on the door of those really large channels that I'm talking about. But they got to figure out a way to do this on a more regular basis if they would like to enjoy these types of views again and again. Is that a healthy thing for me to suggest? Mm -hmm. I think it's about how they approach that. I think you could do this once every few months and and you know not fill your home <laughs> completely with these modular builds but still enjoy these big spikes and then the next time you release a more personalized video uh instead of uh 2.5k views in three weeks you know it could be at 5k views in three weeks there's a larger audience now that does care about what you're up to if you look at those first three videos there is a bit of data here about how many views per hour they're getting which i think was if you scroll down down so seven four three so quick mass that's 14 views per hour times by 24 is blah 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 blah, blah. about 350 views per day from these videos and you would assume that all of the other ones they get an initial velocity of like maybe a few hundred a couple of thousand views in a week or two and then they just die off completely whereas yeah. these modular ones are still bringing in an audience 
so again, it suggests to me that you could probably go back to these modular builds and have an audience there. I mean, just imagine if it was like a, a, a Lego Star Wars modular type build that you could do. Uh, it, it's so many Lego sets out there that you could attach them, I would think, in, in quite an interesting way. Yeah. I mean, you could do a similar thing with the Friends build, but maybe it's a Death Star, but it, it, it comes apart and there's scenes from the movie, from different movies and different sections of it. You know what I mean? Um, there's there's all kinds of cool stuff you can do. But yes, it takes like an extreme amount of creativity and and money, and there's all kinds of stuff that goes into this content. So not knocking the creator too hard here for the where for the lack of content, you know, quote unquote lack of content. I think it's good they're taking their time and they're they're doing everything they can. And then just looking at their shorts real quick. Their most popular one is this one, uh, Lego Up Home Modular, with almost a million views. Sweet. Buying your first Lego modular building. I added road plates to my Lego city. Like little things like this, when people are scrolling through shorts, as long as they're like visually appealing, you're going to stop the scroll. And it looks like that's what they're doing. Yeah, this channel is doing exceptionally well. And they're on the precipice, I would say, Dan. They're on, they're on the very edge of making a giant leap forward. Similar to that channel we audited last week. You remember it was a shorts channel and they built um, mechanical motorized Lego sets. Yeah. And they all did these visually really interesting things. Um, very similar to that channel, but I just can't remember the name of it because we audit so many channels. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Kiwi Modulars, uh, we hope there was some uh, value in there for you. Keep going though. Best of luck and uh, good luck on your move. It's probably, you're probably done with that by now, but uh, definitely should be a video about your new space. Uh, but be thinking about this from maybe the perspective of the viewers who watched these videos. You You built some shelves and people were really into that. So now might be a good time to remake this video with your new space. Just an idea. Um, all right. So that brings us to almost the end of our pre-selected channels. We do have one more before we get into random selections. And this one is going to come from our Facebook group. If you're in various vidIQ communities, sometimes you'll be asked to participate in a challenge and you could get a channel review. And this week it was to come up with a title for this thumbnail. Now, we were credited with making this thumbnail. Um, <laughs> I just want to for the record say that disclaimer we physically make this thumbnail i think it's very obvious where this thumbnail came from um but it was to come up with a, a title uh, it, for this you know how we make these uh, thumbnails obviously through dolly or something um the i think the prompt is um somebody who looks like jason statham uh youtube themed <laughs> and that's how they end up with kind of something that looks a bit like me <laughs> so, so if, you do, if you do want to prompt me uh, and send in your entries on Twitter or something. There That'd you go. be cool. Uh, the winning title was We Let Rob Out of His YouTube Cage. Here's what happened. Yeah. And I just want to say, like, now I want to see that thumbnail. <laughs> you in a YouTube cage, <laughs> like the, the before. Uh, so the channel that sent us uh, this title was Traveling with Teens. It was 1.313K subscribers and 44 videos. This was a channel we saw months ago. Um, so now we can kind of see what they're up to okay. lately. Uh, value prop is pretty, you know, straightforward before they fly the nest. Yeah. So they're traveling with their their teenagers before their teenagers get on with their lives and uh, college and all that fun stuff. So let's see what we can see. So immediately... I look at the thumbnail, which is bottom left currently, Dan, which says, don't cruise with teens until you have watched this video. Mm -hmm. And I get what you're trying to uh, communicate here in the sense that teens may be a bit challenging because they might want to, I don't know, I'm just going to come up with some random things here. They may, they may want to um, drink alcohol on the cruise ship or or go and do certain activities on the cruise ship and whether they can do or not. The problem with the pitch is that you don't give a, a bit of a why as to cruising with teens because the thumbnail is a bit bland. You're just kind of repeating the title in the thumbnail. And I guess you need to add some sort of risk or stakes or jeopardy um, you know, I'm not saying that you know, your teens are rebels, delinquents, they're going to get in trouble. 
But that's kind of, I feel, Dan, as if that's a kind of pitch of the entire channel in that teens are a bit of an awkward age. Uh, they want to be more independent. They're about to fly the nest, but they haven't quite yet. Uh, so, you know, barriers are being pushed. Boundaries are being like renegotiated. That's kind of a, the sense I get. Mm -hmm. And the thumbnail just doesn't fully commit or execute on that. And I, I and then I would kind of extend that to all of the thumbnails here. Um, the idea is sound, but I don't think you fully commit to the idea in the in the pitch. And I'm yeah. trying to work out if I said something similar the last time we audited this channel. I I, I think the thing that I'm noticing because I agree with your points on that video. The thing I'm noticing is like the latest video, for example, it it couldn't be more like straightforward as to like okay, like here's what we're going to do. But I'm missing, like, the reason to watch this, you know? Yeah. Th th this isn't the fun part of travel for a lot of people. A lot of people want to get to the, the cool place and then live that experience, be it for themselves or if they're watching your videos, like, through you. And so this part, I mean, maybe there's some cool stuff that happens in it, but it's it does seem like just a vlog of, like, oh, here's our experience flying. I would rather see this in the context of, like, tips for, like, saving money or having a more comfortable experience or packing or things like that, like packing for the trip. But, but just, like, the the sheer, like, oh, we're going to fly, you know, come watch. It It's just, it's missing that oomph for me. Maybe a, a good description would be it's a bit of a vanilla experience. Mm-hmm. There's, a, a the, there's the what, but there's not necessarily the the intriguing why. Yeah. Another video that did pretty well for them, but I still want to pick on a little bit. Best food <laughs> at sea, who wins? And it says food battle. Um, I, I think this is, if you read it and look at it long enough, it's clear that you're reviewing food for different cruise ships. But it just doesn't, it's a little too clever, I guess. I'd say it's maybe like 15% too clever. You know, there's no food in the thumbnail. Um, there's food battle is pretty extreme, <laughs> for, you know, for for what you're trying to say. So I still think the, this is another area of improvement as well. Is like you, you want your tri titles to be intriguing, but if you make them too clever, it's it's a bit. It, it it gives me that extra bit of brain processing power to have to think food best food at sea. What are you talking at sea? Is such a weird term too. It makes me feel like you're you're on a raft lost at sea you know it's just that those two words make it sound a little more dangerous rather than luxury cruise you know and let's have some sort of tease in in the thumbnail again we, we see the what but i don't know maybe on the uh disney cruise uh you get to um eat food that looks like uh mickey mouse's decapitated head because oh. you got the, you got a pancake and then you got some eggs that are as the shapes of years i don't know what i'm talking about here but I'm, I'm, i guess you want to try and find some some curiosity to bring the viewer in otherwise I, I, i'm seeing everything here in the thumbnail and the title which is i'm comparing food on two different cruise line cruise yeah. lines okay cool and is that gonna is that going to make the decision too? Like, think about the the people watching the video. Who's the audience? Are are they literally they are they picking between two cruise ships because of the food, like two cruise lines, uh, is, or is there a, a larger conversation you could have if you're going to compare two cruise lines? You know what I mean? Like, there's probably the food is probably just one factor. Like, what are, what activities are there to do? Uh, what are the prices like? All that fun stuff. What are the what are the rooms like? So you've kind of focused in on like one specific thing. And it got views. I know I'm picking on one of, out of all these videos, it's one of your better viewed videos, but I still think it could have done even better. It just, it's, it really, really got to consider the audience that it's for, and then their understanding of what's going to happen in the video based on the title and the thumbnail. And then, Dan, as we have audited all of these different videos, you try and put this all together from a channel's perspective. The first video we looked at was cruising with teens. Then we looked at flight traveling from one place to another mm -hmm. then we looked at comparing food on different cr cruise liners and then if we look at the rest of the videos here a whale watching experience travel tips to san diego if i was to not know what the channel name is or the value proposition i would be saying to myself this just seems like a bit of a random travel channel without necessarily a, a key through line.
Mm -hmm. it, it does feel that way. And there's a lot of different places they're going. You know, what's cool is I feel like this family is having a lot of awesome experiences yeah. on a somewhat regular basis. Absolutely. And I, I think this is a great way to chronicle that. Like, this is one of those situations where you're going to be able to look back on this channel years from now and, and relive some of that. And that's so, so cool. So anything we say here, I just don't want to discourage you from, from doing that. But you are, you are asking for a channel review, looking to get some more views. This is great. As we scroll down, we can see some stuff that has taken off in the past. It's the Disney Cruise. Look at, look at that when they had a run of the Disney Cruise, starting with uh, like one day at Disney Port. And then look at the view counts, 1,400, mm -hmm. 20,000, 6,000, 7,000, 10,000, 16,000. And then you scroll up again a little bit, uh, 3,500. And then things just kind of die off and still Disney stuff. And then they're into traveling elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 this is a challenge, yeah. obviously, for travel channels where we go to one place, we get some footage, we build up an audience. But do we want to go to uh, Disney locations and go on Disney cruises all of the time? You want to say yes, yeah. but your audience, sorry, you want to say no. We want to experience different travel adventures. But your audience says, yes, I want you to do more of that. There, there are hundreds of channels that have been built around the Disney experience and nothing else. Yeah. You could try to do something cheeky when you go somewhere totally different. Let's say you go to Arizona. Like, is there a place in Arizona as a theme park? And could you say the Disneyland of Arizona or something like that? Like, but ultimately, yeah, you are building a, a Disney fan base here. And there your audience is probably standing by and waiting for the next time you do a Disney thing. Because there's just such a, you know, a cult following of of Disney and their all of their, you know, things that they do, obviously, but especially theme parks. Um, they're, they're very expensive. People want to get the most out of them and people, when they can't go, they watch videos like this. I've certainly gotten sucked into some Disney channels in the past. I'm talking about channels that go to Disney parks and, and just, you know, check out the new things that they've done. And, and I, I definitely watch stuff like this too, where they eat cool, different, crazy foods and, and things like that. So this isn't surprising to me at all, but if you're wondering, how do I get back to this? It really, it, it is just a question of why did people watch this? And it, it's unfortunately it is a very very likely because of the disney element here now these titles and thumbnails by the way i think these are better i i think these are more reminiscent of travel channels that i've seen and i don't have to think too hard when i look at these titles i think i just understand them pretty quickly whereas some of the later ones i'm i'm there's a couple standouts where i'm just like what <laughs> uh so there could be some tweaks that they make but yes ultimately this is the problem it's pretty no, I don't cool. even want to say problem. Just this is a challenge. It's pretty cool how the outlier tool as well just can quickly highlight. Like if you look at these videos as a collection, they're yeah. all outliers. And if you scroll to the top down, the outlier number just kind of disappears completely. Like none of these are outliers. Mm -hmm. Like Disney 100, the exp the exhibition is VIP worth it. I, I'm I'm so sorry. I just don't know what Disney 100 is, but I know what a Disney Cruise is. So, could you have explained this to somebody like me, who, you know, I know what Disney parks are, but I don't know every little marketing campaign they've ever put out. So, that's another thing too when you're just considering audience. All right. Well, that's traveling with teens. Um, we've picked apart your channel quite a bit. Ultimately. A lot of stuff that you are doing right, that you have done right, that, that's that gone really, really well. Some of the later things, not so much, but there, there's a lot of hope here. I wouldn't be too discouraged. Just, uh, you know, consider your audience with every upload. And with that, Rob, uh, we can mm -hmm. go back to Super Chats for a minute before we get back to more channels. More Super Chats, eh? We are approaching the top of the hour, um, about the halfway point today. So thank you all. Just keep that in mind as you're giving us Super Chats. We appreciate that. Uh, we don't want you to get missed. Uh, hey guys, spill the tea. When have you heard we're going to get the thumbnail comparison tool? What's the word on the street? <laughs> I don't know. It's frustrating. Uh, yeah. I, I kind of thought when YouTube announced this six months ago and said it would be available in 2024, I thought first quarter of 2024. Uh, but apparently that's not been a case. My guess is when it does become available, it will just be landed on everybody all at once within a one week period. 
Yeah. And it, I'm hoping YouTube do this because we have got a video about this topic and I've designed it, Dan, for search. I'm hoping <laughs> that people are going to search, test and compare as soon as they've got it and find our video. So it, it's frustrating for everybody. Well, I kind of it's, not, it's not frustrating for us because we've got it. And we, I don't have it on my channels, though, and that's but, yeah. really just been killing me because I know the power of it and I, I just want it really bad. Uh, Learn Spanish World says, I'm currently experimenting with new formats. Is it okay to experiment with new thumbnails also? <laughs> this, they would love to have a test and compare feature because then they yeah. can test their uh, new thumbnails with their existing ones. I think it's always okay to experiment. Just Me too. Keep in mind, like, one thing that you do does not an experiment make. You know, an experiment would take probably a few iterations. But you also want to, if there's a balance between the content you were making and the new stuff you're experimenting with, Try and keep the balance for a little bit while you test out the new stuff um, in case you need to pivot and go back. Um, but yeah, I would always encourage anyone to not be afraid to experiment. Also consider how much experimentation you're doing on each video because you're saying you're experimenting with new formats. But is it like new video formats, but also new thumbnails? Like you're mm -hmm. doing more than one experiment in one video and then it's difficult then to find out what works best with that experiment. So try not to do everything in in one video experiment. Yeah. Uh, uh, Perry's Passport. Hey, guys. I have learned a lot from you, but I still can't figure out what makes a video hit and, uh, and which ones don't. So it really is just about the idea, I think. Uh, there's a there's hundred things it's about, but you saw the channel we were just looking at with the the cruise lines and stuff and we look we scroll down a little bit and when they were doing a lot of disney stuff those videos hit they spoke to a specific audience and then their newer stuff didn't speak to that same audience and in they're effectively going to end up building a whole new audience with this new content if they do it long enough that may not be a bad thing unless there's just not a lot of people in that pool as much as the disney pool which is going to have a lot more it's just it has a fandom built in and they tapped into that fandom so it really is just about like the concepts and ideas behind your videos and then understanding who would watch these and what's the, what's the limit to that? The next thing I upload was that, is that audience going to follow me and uh, we're always doing experiments ourselves uh, in the background on, on this channel, on our personal channels. And we try and learn as much as we can and bring that to you. And I can tell you as someone who's been experimenting myself, um, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about what audiences will and won't tolerate. You know, and uh, it's it's just an ever ongoing process. Apparently, there's everyone thinks there's a big algorithm change recently. So YouTube's just constantly changing and updating as well. And we have to kind of keep teaching ourselves like, well, OK, what <laughs> what what content is getting pushed? And, and then you still have to keep that audience in mind. So it's a it's a whole lot. Uh, there's no one answer, one size fits all answer, which is why I'm rambling. <laughs> it's just like Dan's rambling. Um, all I would add to that is um, Perry's passport. Uh, look at the collection of videos you have now look at the most popular ones but also in real-time analytics which videos continue to produce for you review those videos whether it's thumbnails titles ideas as dan said length of video try to find a common pattern in what makes them a hit for you because everybody's interpretation of a hit video is different like let's say on average you average let's say on average you get 50 views per video but there is four videos on your channel that got 200 views well hey those are hit videos for you and that's the patterns you want to try and identify chess and poems became Oops. a youtube member that's the wrong button let me find a different one you can have that one huh okay uh orc dev says started with my old account i had 1500 subs in a totally different niche now i've gained a thousand new subs does it hurt my channel badly um those old subs i have I don't think so. They no. just won't be interested in what you're uploading now. YouTube's probably not even serving those videos to those old subscribers at this point. Um, if you've gained a thousand subscribers, but not only that, you've probably gained a lot of views and you're now in the watch history of your intended audience. That's fine. Keep yeah. up with it. And, it. and it just demonstrates as well that a channel is never dead. You can pivot. You can resurrect it. It's a good job. Mm -hmm. Tennis Lettuce says best strategy to revive <laughs> dead shorts channel. Well, well if um, we go back to the previous uh, message, yeah, just check out their channel and see how they revived their old channel. I, I say just make shorts. Just You have to just 
get back into like a regular cadence of making shorts for a specific audience. And uh, it's as simple as that, really. Stealth Force Gaming became a member. Oh, the new members, I keep pressing the wrong button. Uh, you can have this one. And there's one more. Uh, we have Mayuka. I'm so sorry. Uh, they became a member. I'm running out of sound effects. Have Has anyone had this yet? Bruh. I don't think so. And then Zach Perry with a super. Appreciate you. And then they gave another one. I, I, I apologize that you felt to the need to give two there. Uh, I'm losing viewers quite quickly. Should I make an intro or a mashup of the video of what to of what's to come? So like a trailer, I think, like a like a teasing stuff that you're gonna do in the f future. Mm. I don't think you need to do that. Yeah, I don't think an intro or mashup or like a you know coming up next on the channel. Yeah, is really required from YouTube. I guess I need to know what they mean by losing viewers quite quickly yeah i i would just don't do big long intros like just get into the content as quickly as you can go back and see what was working before and study it figure out what what was i doing then that i'm not doing now and then consider how you can evolve your new content but also keep the essence of what was bringing them in the first place i wouldn't say you're losing viewers quickly you have made content that is not of interest to the people who were watching you previously and Hopefully, the next time you upload something that is more familiar to them that they originally subscribed to you for, they would be happy to come back and watch more. I agree, Dan. And just before we move on at this point, I would say that uh, these super chats that you've been listening to and hopefully gaining information from are a, a teaser, an introduction to the whole concept of one-on-one -on -one coaching here at vidIQ whereby you can ask questions asynchronously. And what that means is video messaging uh, to a coach who will then reply to your questions via video as well. But it's all tailored around your channel. So as opposed to Dan and myself, who are kind of trying to answer questions for a broad audience, one-on-one -on -one coaching is all about you. So if you are interested, as Dan uh, shows you the the page with all of the information about this uh, program that we have here at vidIQ. Do check out the, I think, top link in the video description where you can have your own experienced, talented, and very knowledgeable one-on-one -on -one coach to help build success for your channel right here at vidIQ. With that, we are about to get into random selections, but first let's welcome on our next channel reviewer, Travis. Hey. Hey. How it goes? Now, just, uh, did you just, just play a sound folks. effect? <laughs> just remember, folks, that was not your Discord uh, <laughs> sound effect. That was one on the live stream. Yes. <laughs> Why? Do you have a disconnect that, one? Such a deep cut. I, I, um... Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, so <clears throat> you're here just in time because we're about to get into random selections. Right. Uh, what are you? What are you hoping to see? I'm hoping to see either a incredible channels that we can like talk about and, and really kind of double down on help people understand why they blew up or channels that are so terribly terrible that it's just so easy to give them great advice that they will become those great channels next week. Right. I don't want yeah. anything in the middle. It's too difficult. I don't want to think about things. I just woke <laughs> up. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to tormenting people. As we welcome back the claw. The claw. Now, the, the, claw is, the claw is joining us remotely today. Um, so here's how Joy. this works. <laughs> <laughs> we have 486 responses on the non-gaming form. We have 379 in the gaming form. So 468. Sorry, did I say that backwards? 468. That's the number I need to remember because what we're going to do is we're going to just ask our claw. Can you please pick a number? between one and 468 because we need to pick a channel. And then we we just wait a brief moment, a brief moment. It's not gonna take very long. And the claw will tell us the number it picks. Here we oh, go. Oh, great. Another number, another hopeful channel. Let me praise the almighty YouTube like button while I'm at it. Let's go with 273, not like it matters much. 
Another drop in the overwhelming YouTube ocean. Not like Dan and Rob are even going to know it's me picking these numbers. Ugh. Mm, sounds a little salty. Sounds a little disappointed. Yeah. yeah, sorry about that. Uh, well, we have the channel here. As I mess up everything. 273. They're making long form videos. It's Rob and Matt. They're another travel me? theme park vlog. Well, am I making another channel? We have a side channel, Rob. You didn't tell us yeah. about. Yeah. Hmm. Well, here it is. Wait Vlogging a minute. These people park? have hair. This isn't me. Oh, yeah. okay, sure. Oh, Disney Channel, as we've just been talking about. <laughs> so they've committed. It looks like fully. I think to the the Disney stuff. Um, let's see if that's true in the content. Okay, so this is a British channel because I I've heard of Alton How Towers where you two probably haven't. And Fort I have Park. Not. I've heard of Faulty Towers. <laughs> okay, so Disney's in the channel banner, but I'm not seeing it a lot here, which is fine. Yeah. Here's some Disney stuff from a, a little while ago. Disneyland Paris. Okay. One outlier here. Disney Paris. This is kind of interesting how they jump around. Like, are these two places close to each other? Uh, no. So Alton Towers is in the UK. Disneyland Paris is in France. So you're talking about different country. Is it like a quick train ride? I don't know the... No. No, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> Nothing is a quick train ride in the UK, Dan, since Got it. all the train okay. drivers are constantly on strike and the infrastructure doesn't work. Okay. It does, it does look like the Disney videos have more views. Uh, it's just a small sample size. Yes, but I think in contrast to the previous channel, channel we were looking at, when they're not at Disney, they're still experiencing theme parks of some description. So there's sure. that f through line through the channel, which I think creates a, s a sustainability of audience. You know, as you said, Dan, maybe there's more interest in the Disneyland stuff just because of the uh, association to such a, a huge theme park and such a big audience. Um, but when you go from Disney, which is a global brand, to Alton Towers, which is something that's only going to be f familiar to the UK audience, that's where you're going to have the, the shift in audience, I would say. Uh, so... I would say in terms of channel focus, they, they do pass that sniff test. Mm -hmm. What I might uh, think about is a bit of a stronger pitch in their thumbnails since most of the time their technique seems to be block of text in the bottom right-hand corner of the thumbnail, sometimes covered up by the timestamp, so be aware of that. Those two people in the thumbnails and then kind of as the, the last thing we see in the thumbnails, it's usually the, the ride or the experience. Yeah. And, and the thumbnails tend to be quite flat. And what I mean by that is that there's, there's no distinction between foreground and background. So we're not sure where our eye should sort of track when we immediately fall on the thumbnail. And then muddy colors. And by that, I mean, it was just a, an assortment of regular day colors. Like we can't really find a dominant color in a lot of these thumbnails tends to be mostly some of them are fine but uh, i would say all of the thumbnails on the top here except for the one on the left hand side the mardi gras one which certainly has a purple and yellow theme the thumbnails to the right all kind of have similar colors which kind of melt into each other when they're at this size or smaller which they certainly would be on a mobile device mm. I, I i'm gonna say that the titles so, because I, I I think the thumbnails as well. I agree with all that, but the titles too. We need to work on those a little bit. Like if the if I don't have it pulled up anymore, but the previous channel we looked at, their their videos really visited Disney parks that were doing very well, were about specific of things they were doing, like trying certain foods or going to specific events. And these feel a little more generic and zoomed out. Like it was this event worth visiting? We don't really know. Like there's two titles here: Thorpe Park Mardi Gras vlog. Uh, we did what at Alton Towers? Like, it'd be kind of great to know, <laughs> actually. You know the, what I mean? Uh, the big highlight, the, the yeah. one big thing that they did or the one right. mistake they made. I, I'm, I've seen this also on the um, 
our tips for men nemesis opening day now i think that's a big ride at one of the theme parks and they have this blank checklist where really when you think about the best things to the best way to get on the ride is like what time should i go or uh, do what should i get the fast pass or you know is there some weird technique whereby if you go like 30 minutes after lunchtime when everybody's uh doesn't want to go on the ride because they'll throw up you know that's like the ideal time and you kind of want to tease that kind of secret in there whereas it, again there's similar to a channel we looked at earlier there's not enough of a real strong hook and pitch in the in the thumbnail and title. yeah i you could have put something on this checklist basically you know and it could have been kind of silly things too but just just stuff that would have made people kind of laugh a little bit or or just it, it, draw some intrigue so yeah i'd say there's a lot of room for improvements here we've kind of picked apart the stuff that we're seeing just on the surface any other final thoughts on this channel all right silence means no <laughs> that means we'll move on to a gaming channel yeah uh all right so we will bring back the claw we have on the gaming channel 300 and or form rather 393 responses um Thanks, Claw. Now we need you to pick a number between 1 and 393. And then we wait just a brief moment for the Claw to think about this really carefully and say... Oh, here we go again. A bitter toast to the YouTube-like button. Number 265, there you have it. Just another channel stepping into the overcrowded scene. Not that it matters to Dan and Rob, always on the hunt for more numbers. It's endless. I tell you, endless. Not having it today, the claw. Uh, let's get rid of the claw now. And we're on uh, this channel here. K K K Kain? I have no idea how to say this name. Um, Kian. Let's go with Kian. Kian. Okay, that's great. 3,000 subscribers. They they claimed they were a shorts channel. We can see Minecraft. Um, we can see lots of views. on. This is the latest, by the way. I'm not even almost popular. It's very interesting. I, wow, I suppose that's, you should watch that's a couple. consistent. Yeah, very consistent. Uh, let's take a look. All right. Let me just unmute it real quick. Uh, just in case the music is not allowed. How many hits from each axe to kill a... Oh, this is... Okay, they've linked a long-form video. How long does it take to mine 100 blocks with each pickaxe? Okay, so pretty straightforward concept there. Take a look at another one. How many hits from each axe to kill a warden? So same concept. It's just they're using different tools to do different things, basically. Yep. Very, find, very consistent. Find an idea, repeat, repeat, repeat for YouTube shorts, and YouTube will consistently find that audience. And it's similar, I would say, to those family channels where they have a game. You know, where they've got like play beer pong or roll something into a different slot and somebody wins $50, another person wins $2 and the father always ends up winning no dollars because he's use, useless at it. I kind of get that vibe, which is cool. It, it's fine and it will, it will build an audience as they have done. They've just got to keep coming up with ideas of how different items interact with different objects on Minecraft and they've got hundreds and hundreds of ideas. No they, complaints, really, here. Yeah, yeah uh, before this series, they were doing uh, some a whole, a whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, I made subway servers in Minecraft, is what I understand. <laughs> That's very loud. Sorry, um, but yeah, they've they've tried to recreate these subway servers mini game. Okay, that's cool as well. Nice yeah. idea. I I would like to see this uh, extended a bit. It's pretty short. I know it's YouTube Shorts, but if you had sped it up and had like a longer run, oh, it's still going. Never mind. That's cool. Very creative. Advice-wise, um, I don't know, Travis. What What are your thoughts? We haven't heard from you yet. For like a Shorts Minecraft channel, um, I mean, it's it's kind of well. I mean, I guess we go down here. Some of these aren't, but for the most part, it, it seems in line with a lot of the stuff that's out there, and you never really know exactly what's going to pop off and what isn't. Um, in the in the former Max community, we had a person who was very specifically going down. I think it's Hermit Craft or something. I mm -hmm. think is what it's called. 
And um, she actually just mentioned in the Discord uh, the other day that one of the largest creators, a 7 million subscriber creator, subscribes to her now. Oh, wow. Based on the smaller channel. I mean, her channel is like, I think it's like a thousand subscribers or something. So doing the work might actually open up doors in other places. So even, I mean, first of all, they're killing it with views on here. But um, I think when you find a specific niche within like a larger niche, so the larger niche being Minecraft and then kind of smaller thing being like Hermitcraft, you might actually find even more success or even more influence. So uh, I don't know if it's just, um, this is like a challenge thing for, for Minecraft, which is pretty dope. Um, and they're all getting great views. Or if they're, if, you know, what, what's the end goal? It's always my question to a creator. What's your end goal? What are you trying to accomplish by making this channel? And if it's just make a bunch of cool, you know, Minecraft videos that get, you know, tens of thousands of views on shorts, awesome, great. Um, if you're trying to grow influence, there's probably some other ways of doing that. Uh, but overall, I mean, listen, it, it's working. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything as far as the short strategy goes. Are they making longs at all, Dom? Yeah, that's a good question. Okay, some. I kind of had a three-week hiatus there. Yeah, there's uh, this PvP concept. Didn't work too well when they uh, swapped from lowest sensitivity to highest sensitivity. But, I mean, hey, this is actually pretty interesting. So some of these videos, we're talking tens of views, and then you get up here. Lately, they've been able to break 100, and this one got mm. almost 2,000 views. So their experiments that they're doing in Minecraft are paying off. I don't know how many shorts viewers are going to move over to your long form side. I wouldn't worry about that. I would worry. I would treat it like two separate kind of channels that do similar things. But uh, this is, I'd say, really promising. I would test out, like, keep testing different experiments and stuff. But I mean, these videos are like two minutes long. We've we've seen long form videos uh, do really well that are longer. <laughs> you know. Uh, when I see a two minute video, I almost wonder, could you not have made that a short? Could you have cut this down by 50% and would it have performed better? I don't know. I, I would love to see you experiment with things in a more long form style, I guess is what I'm saying as, as a test, if you're going to keep doing long form videos. You know, um, if you remember Dan, 100% Zelda yeah. had success when they, try, when they like revealed the use of every single item in the Zelda game. And I wonder if this channel could maybe try something similar because in the shorts, they're using one object versus one, using one weapon versus one object. I'm wondering if they could almost expand on that if they were to do long form content. So just if you um, sort by most popular here, um, some of the older videos whereby uh, it was like um, strongest weapons in Zelda. So that the 5 million view one, like they're using every single weapon in that video. Can they do something similar in Minecraft where they use every single pickaxe for an object or whatever? So they're just taking the shorts idea and like expanding it. The challenge is how do you make it interesting for 10 minutes as opposed to two minutes? Because you can't just rinse and repeat. People will get bored after a certain amount of time. Yeah. Well, all right. So thank you for submitting your channel. But um, yeah, well done as a Minecraft creator. Oh yeah, finding finding uh, a sub niche and, and building on that sub niche, always really tricky as a gaming channel. Absolutely, we will move on to our next non-gaming channel now. With 491 responses in the form, we do need to bring back the claw, unfortunately, and say, <laughs> "All right, on our non-gaming channel list, there are now 491 responses, and you must pick one of them." As Dan said, unfortunately, we have to bring 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 back. Yeah, it's grumpy today. Very grumpy. Sure. Praise the YouTube like button, I guess. Let's see. I'll go with 384. Yet another hoping to stake their claim in the infinite wilderness that is YouTube. My gears ache just thinking about it. Oh, and don't forget to credit me once in a while, Dan and Rob. Just saying. Well, credit to us for picking this channel i think we did a great job uh so 384 that's what it said right yep and uh it's sparkling choice they said music with an music mark. music all right that's ironic because uh i just sent something to dan that maybe we'll do at the very end <laughs> uh well perfect then that means you get to kick us off oh great i hate doing music channels they're very <laughs> difficult they're actually 
perhaps one of the most difficult channels, at least for, for myself, to actually try to audit. Because what do you say? <laughs> do better you know, music. I don't know. Like, what do you really say about it? You, um, you know what's funny is, like at the beginning of the live stream, we have this video that says, we share nothing more than our knowledge, wisdom, experience, <laughs> and passion for YouTube. And Travis's response is, I hate music channels. Cool. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> I hate trying to audit them. I don't hate music channels. I just hate like trying to audit them because I, I want to give them advice that's going to be actionable. But what do you say? Don't use that hook next time. Don't use that verse next time. Like what do you? I, I don't uh, sing in a higher pitch. Like there's, those the things that you would normally say in a YouTube, uh, you know, strategy session are not the things you say in a music channel. Um, I guess the one thing you could say is if you're not well known outside of uh, your niche or, or yourself, I should say. In other words, if you're not famous coming into YouTube, uh, doing cover songs is a really great uh, way to get some people to, to start watching your content because they understand like the song that you're trying to sing. Uh, if you have no audience at all, it is more difficult, not impossible, but it is more difficult because YouTube has to understand what type of viewers are going to watch and like your content, which is a whole strategy thing that we talk about on VidIQ all the time. So it is very difficult, but I like the I like the idea of the top ten titles tracks and B sides of March. But um, of March, like for what though? For yeah, okay. So there's Blackpink. So when you do things like Blackpink, that makes sense. Like the top ten B sides from Blackpink, eventually that could do well, especially if you're singing it well. Like that makes sense. But if you're saying of March, like does that mean the top forty pop? Like what are we talking about? I think we, what we need to establish here is is this a music cover channel or is it a kind of a fan appreciation channel. And to me, it looks like a fan appreciation channel where, yeah, Dan, you'll probably have to mute it here. Yeah, I know. I'm just uh, because it's probably taking uh, music from the originals themselves with yeah. clips. Uh, so, you know, there may be a bit of a, a copyright question to try and answer there, which could be a challenge. Um, so their upload schedule, okay. So this is a lot of information, very just straightforward information about you, but we don't, what, what I'm struggling with is they're saying that this is their top 10 songs and my most listened to songs and things like that. But I've, I've not built any kind of relationship or connection with this creator and yeah. there doesn't seem to be an opportunity to do that. So I get that these are your favorite songs, but what about the audience? Like what? What is the value? What's in it for them? You know, can I show you day? something that I came across? I just sent you a link, Dan. Yeah, I, I came across this guy um, just a couple of weeks ago. It randomly showed up on my um, suggestions feed. Play, play this. Show this. Uh, exactly. It's dope. It's really dope. I just sent you the link. Goodness. Oh wow! Booty, booty, booty. Sorry, I'm ruining the song by a minute. Love stuff like this. I'm yeah, gonna... so he's showing like the different parts of the song, and it's phenomenal. It's so yeah. cool, and he does like different video game songs and stuff. And I'm not saying you should do that, but this is a creative way. He's breaking down the different stuff, like that thing right there. I'd never seen such a thing, but when you hear it and he shows it right as he's making the, the that part of the song, it's like your mind explodes. Yeah, is that the, and this thing? I never seen one of these before. And then you listen to this, you're like what? It's so good. It's way good. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, if you can think about, look, so someone in the channel said, I watched this video. Um, the thing is, is like, th and look at that, look at that graph there, the, the public graph. Look how big it gets. Yeah. Um, it, it is a very creative way. That's so cool. Of doing different things that people are aware of. And of course, you've all probably seen the the acapella Japanese acapella group or whatever, where they do the different theme songs and video game songs and stuff. Um, what an incredible, like, creative way to get into music. Now, this, I mean, I'm all about this. I watched this guy's song for this and like three other songs, and I would have never found him otherwise. But it's because he linked into something that was really popular that the the YouTube algorithm understood that I sometimes watch video game videos, and it's like, you know, sometimes I watch music videos. It understands the viewership and goes, Travis, check this out. And then I'm watching three or four of his videos. It, yeah, like I that is advice we've given to music channels in the past of like, why don't you jump on something that's like people recognize it's classic or trending or something like that. Th that advice is lost on this channel because I, I see this channel as similar to a shorts channel that kind of uploads clips from basketball games that they thought were cool. You know, 
they're kind of just posting stuff that they didn't make. And it's like, I like these and maybe you will too. And if any of these videos take off, I hate to say it, but it's, it's going to be because of the songs in them that someone else made and not really because of the effort that you put in and the, and your, your taste making that you're trying to do on YouTube. And so that's kind of the battle here. And I just, I, I worry about as of right now, you're talking about, these are my top 10 picks, but there's just no, I don't feel like there's a creator behind this channel. And that's what makes it really difficult to review in, in this case and like give really actionable tips. A, a transformational aspect from the creator, Dan, you would say. It, it, yeah. It, it could easily be a, a collection of songs that a, an algorithm has chosen in that sense. So um, thank you for submitting. I'm sorry if we didn't really dive into this one, uh, but we will pick another channel. And I would have can... one more one more yeah. bit of advice. I'd just say in the titles, like most listened to songs and artists of March, let's include the music genre in those titles just for, for the SEO richness of it. True. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we'll go back to the gaming list where we have 410 responses now, and we'll very simply ask the claw... If I could get my mouse to stop glitching like mad. I don't know what's going on. Um, hello, Claw. Will you please pick a gaming channel now? There are 410 of them. And we watch as the Claw thinks for a sec and goes, okay, that's a lot of gaming channels. Which one will I pick? And they say... Fine, fine. Always picking. Never resting. Praise the ever-demanding YouTube-like button. Random number 117 because why not? Another gaming channel in an overcrowded platform. I bet they're as tired as I am. And Dan and Rob, when will you ever acknowledge my hard work? Psh. <laughs> it was a psh. Never. Wow. <laughs> Never. Oh, dang it. I'm trying to click all the wrong buttons here. All right. It's Stupid Storm. 17.7K subscribers. Whew. Wow. It looks like Roblox. Holy Hundreds smokes. of thousands of views on the latest two videos here. That's the outlier tool again telling us that their most recent videos have pretty much gone viral for them, which is awesome to see. There was uh, a one video a month cadence, but it's yeah. stopped. Can we just check on the gaming form, Dan? Uh, are they a short or a long channel? Did you say okay, long? So, so long. So obviously, I mean, this is a bit of a get out for us. The channel is doing awesome. They're yep. getting far more views and subscribers why are you not serving the audience more than you are which is which was one video a month and now you haven't done anything for three months that's yeah. insane yeah those those last two videos from months ago are insane you people want to watch your videos and for whatever reason you're not making videos i i love the concept too of amazing roblox games nobody plays roblox greatest hits and hidden gems uh and you know what like even those were two videos about like a collection of games but this one about a specific game still did very very well still probably continues to do well so i feel like just from these three videos you could get a lot of ideas on like where to go next and yeah the, the we, we're left scratching our heads a little bit because you had a huge jump here and you were already like experimenting with different topics that got a lot of success in the past so this is great i think any gaming channel here would, would love to have a run like this and we're all just wondering, where did you go? Let's watch the first 20 seconds of uh, the last video. Did Sound you like know that. Roblox actually has fun, amazing games to play? Probably not, since you only see trash like this. Then for any games that are actually fun and not made to take all your money, Roblox hides these amazing games from you so they can make more money off of these low quality cash grabs. But today, I have dug up some amazing games that you, my viewer, probably never played before. To start this off with a banger. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh a hundred percent perfect edit. 90 percent of the gaming channels watching this don't edit like this and i yep. don't mean that as a slight but i mean like there's so much time that went into that first 22 seconds so much editing time that i guarantee a lot of people that have gaming channels right now watching this stream are going yeah i can't get any views or subscribers and then you realize that you're going against a video like that is your editing anywhere even near that probably not um, and that's the level that you have to compete against. I mean, the, the reality is it might not I'm like, oh, that's not fair. You know, they have more time or something. Well, life ain't fair. This is the reality of the situation. You have a channel like this. This is why this channel is doing so well, because they understand the, the, the editing necessary for the type of views that they're getting. 
So if you're watching this channel going, oh, they don't need help. They're so big. They're doing well. This is why you literally can learn how to get your channel to the next level. Does it mean that you have to do the Mr. Beast cuts here? No, not necessarily. But it does mean you have to up your level, up your game, because you're competing against channels just like this. Mm -hmm. Well said. My guess is that there's one of two problems here for this channel. It's either lack of passion. They've run out of passion for this particular game topic that they're covering. And my response to that is you're so talented that you could probably start a brand new channel on any topic you want with a mm. passion and it would be successful or time. In other words, you'd love making these videos, but you burn yourself out and spend so long making them that you just haven't got the time or the energy to do it. In which yeah. case the solution is let's start outs outsourcing. If you can find somebody who can write the scripts that you want to read, uh, sorry, write the scripts that fit the video, or you can find an editor that can emulate your style. That is kind of where I think this channel's at. There's nothing wrong with titles, thumbnails, editing, storytelling. It's all there. I, I guess this is some sort of creator existential crisis <laughs> that's going on, if there is one. Yeah. I will mention that in this video here, you said something that I think could spark a whole nother conversation. You accused a lot of the most popular Roblox games of being cash grabs, which kind of brings me to like a natural next idea for you, which would be Roblox games you should avoid. And then you could go into specific reasons as to why people should avoid them. It seems like you have really strong opinions about certain games and perhaps practices that the you know community implements. So... If you want to speak more broadly about Roblox as a topic, I think that would be a good direction because Roblox is so, so, so popular and we've seen so many channels like this, but they always kind of focus on one or two specific games. Um, there's a few different niches around Roblox, like there's the role playing uh, folks, there's folks that just play like the, I think, all the horror games. You could be the person that zooms out a little bit and talks about Roblox as a whole, you know, um, which you've done in these two videos. You don't always have to do that, as we can see, but it is it is an idea. If you're looking for ideas, that is a direction I would go. Consider the things that you're most passionate about, whether they are positive or negative, and and have conversations, like real conversations about them. Amazing Roblox games that aren't dirty cash grabs might be in the one. You 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 did the ones that were done. You could also do the ones that were opposite. Yeah. And if you do a search for gamer ANX, I, I, I'm trying to work out if this channel is called Gamer Anks or Game Game Ranks. And then if you just click and go to like the list of videos, this is like a compilation, not a compilation channel, but they're all compilation ideas. 10 single player games to return to in 2024, 10 most unfair bosses that made us fume. Like you could take these, these ideas and literally plug them into your Roblox universe mm -hmm. and have a, an unlimited source of gaming ideas. If that's another challenge for the creator. Yeah, looking up different channels that do similar things outside of your niche uh, is always a good strategy and something I think everyone should be doing a little bit more of to try and like invent new cool things. Like there were channels that tried to cross a specific country like America in a straight line and then people brought that into, into gaming, you know, and then a whole bunch of gamers like I want to try and cross Skyrim in a straight line. You know, it, it's it, that's how like ideas like evolve and stuff. And, and uh, yeah, definitely keep an eye out on stuff going on outside of your niche. All right, um, so let's get into some super chats. We have a whole bunch of them, and uh, we're gonna fall behind. Money. Actually, we have a handful of them. Um, duck, the cur not funny. I, I don't. I'm so sorry. I'm butchering names today, like mad. What percent of the view swipe rate is enough for going viral? It's one of those questions. What's the magic number? YouTube mm -hmm. will never tell you what it is. Uh, I, th I've heard it. A th a few different people talk about maybe this 75 to 80 percent mark it tends to be quite a hot and high number um but we couldn't give you a definite one i think in our interview with guinea pigs adventures we talked about that um which was oh is, is that where i got the number from is it, it, like, yeah it might be uh it, it's the it's the thumbnail that has the guinea pig in a frying pan like on our channel so go check that video it's very recent and if it made it into the, I think it made it into the final edit. He talks specifically about this view and swipe rate, and uh, mm. that could help. Herd of Cats Gaming says pros and cons for not pushing the videos to a sub feed. Um, 
I would say you almost always want to do that. Uh, there's only very specific cases where I wouldn't. I'm trying to think of a specific case now. Yeah, um, when you maybe have to release a video again mm -hmm. because there was some technical error for the first time you released it. Might be one uh, channel trailer. That would be another one that you probably don't want to publish to your subs feed, but I can't think of many reasons why you would want to do that. But there's been some arguments about you should never push it to your subs feed because all of the people who are subscribed to your channel but never watch any of your videos, um, if it's pushed out to them, then that creates impressions and click-through rate, which tanks the video. Um, but my understanding is if the person subscribed to the channel but they've not watched any of your videos, anyway, it's very unlikely that they're going to see it and a notification or on the subs feed anyway. Um, this feels like one of those half a percent or one percent questions where you're trying to find a marginal gain yeah and it's probably not worth worrying your head over jeep psychology says any suggestions for script writer's block ai doesn't really know off-roading and <laughs> the chest beating neanderthals will tear those scripts into pieces my goodness <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> Well, do we have any suggestions? Hire a script writer. What? What is the chest beating Neanderthals will tear these scripts to pieces? If they're a chest beating Neanderthal, they probably can't read it. <laughs> I, I think. I think he's describing his audience there. That the, the the classic Jeep enthusiast is like a. I don't know. Maybe I'm insulting. Uh, yeah, I don't Jeep, know if that. I think here. it's a. I think it's a knock on AI scripts, not. Well, Jeep so here's the thing. <clears throat> here's the thing. Uh, AI doesn't. So much like um, when I coach a channel, I don't necessarily know anything about the the channel or, or even the niche it's in. But I've gotten channels millions of views on videos, not because I know the 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 you know like how to build a car or something. Like I I help I help a, one of the largest car channels on YouTube. I'm one of their coaches, and I don't know anything about cars. But we you routinely come up with incredibly uh, banger videos that get millions of views. It's not about that. So you can get AI to help you make the perfect script. The thing is, is a lot of people don't know how to actually um, use prompts correctly. Um, a lot of times I'll just give a little bit. If you give um, OpenAI the appropriate information beforehand, it will give you an outline that you can use and then tweak to your liking. Most mm -hmm. people say, "Tell me, give me a script about this and not give it very much detail. You just got to give it more detail. Say, my audience likes this. I want to talk about this particular type of thing. The, you know, the way this works is this. It's controversial because of this. Like, put all that stuff in there as if you're talking to someone. Everything you can give it, plop it out. And nine times out of ten, you're going to get something usable. And even if you don't the first time, you can ask it to try again. And it's been my experience that if you give it enough information, it, you will get exactly what you're looking for. Uh, if you don't have friends in the niche, which the other thing is, you could go out and look at um, other people in your niche, uh, connect with creators in your niche, and then just ask them. You might be surprised at how open some other creators are. When I was in my first year on YouTube, uh, but way before I got anything near 10,000 subscribers, I was collabing with channels that had millions of subscribers. It's not as hard as you think. You just have to go out there, offer um, some type of uh, uh, value for the time. And that value could be something as simple as, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll help you with thumbnails or something. It could be anything. Whatever your super skill is to a larger creator, believe it or not, is a lot more, uh, a lot bigger of a key to a door than you might think. Uh, one final question from me to Jeep Psychology is, do you always start off your script with a blank screen and a blinking cursor? <laughs> and if that is the case, then maybe you want to invest and research some time into script templates. These might be things that ask questions to you. So like almost you are the AI and the template is prompting you to, to, to give answers to help you build the scripts. So that might be, a, you know, Reverse engineering the idea of AI scripts. Yeah. We're going to reverse engineer you, the creator, into writing those scripts, but have help doing it. So best of luck to Jeep Psychology. And then uh, one last one here from Claw Quest. Loving the stream. Thank you. Claw Thank Quest. You. It's, a, it's, a, it's the fan page of Claudia. <laughs> it is. Well, speaking of, uh, we do need to get back to reviewing some channels. So I've pulled up the Claw. And if I look on the form here, let me just add this back. If I look on the form, we have, we just did a gaming channel, right? So 528 non-gaming channels. We did the Roblox one. 
All right, Claw, there are 528 non-gaming channels. Will you please pick one? Please, for the love of all that is holy, pick a channel. Right, now! Oh, now. Wonderful. an endless sea of hopefuls. More channels for me to pluck from obscurity. Praise be to the YouTube-like button. Let's see, endeavor number 422. There's your next hopeful. Just remember who plucked this channel from the ether for you, Dan and Rob. All right, Rob, thank you for picking this channel for us. Do you think everybody has hit the like button yet? <laughs> that was my goal with the, that prompt. By the way, speaking of AI prompting, there's about three paragraphs of information that go into that claw tool. Uh, you can give AI a lot and uh, create a whole personality. <laughs> Chess uh, and poems. Yes. Almost 4,000 subscribers. A captivating fusion of two worlds. They say they are a long-form video channel. So, if they do have shorts, I just want to see. Okay. So, nothing that's gone, like, super mega viral. True. Uh, those shorts didn't look as if it were chess and poems either. There was... Yeah. Facts about things. Okay. Mm. So okay. what, I, what I'm sniffing right here. There's a whoa. I, Look at all these uploads. I'm sniffing AI. Yeah. Without watching any of the videos yet, I'm sniffing an infusion of AI. Into well, they're uploading every hour. Poems. Yeah. They've Before uploaded every hour for the last seven hours. Let, one let's day. Watch one. Okay. Let's watch one. In the mid 20th century, the name Bobby Fischer became synonymous with chess. Born in 1943, Fischer was a prodigy who won the U.S. Chess Championship at the tender age of 14. So I, what, okay, I, this is a, my own criticism of using AI too much in videos. I, I have a credibility problem. Like whenever I hear a, a, an AI voice now, because when I detect something as a cloned voice, I'm like, I'm not put off by it, like the old style of AI voices. But what I'm immediately questioning is, is that the real year that this person was born? Does this person actually exist? Because I've watched AI get things wrong. And when you're doing like factual information, there has to be a level of fact checking. And the problem is there's no little symbol you could put on a video that says fact checked. So it's just a, a kind of a battle you're going to have to face with people like me who are very cynical about information that is supposed to be factual about real people. So I'm and just going to put that out there. Bobby Fischer has been mentioned as well, and we haven't seen an image of Bobby Fischer yeah. uh, as of yet. These are stock-generated images of people playing chess. So there's, a, there's quite a big disconnect between probably the story that's being told and the stock footage. I mean, sometimes we're, we're guilty of this, and I'll ask the creator community here, if you're guilty of this, whereby you feel as if you need to include what's called a pattern interrupt. You've got to mix up the video in some way. And there's a, maybe a bit of a metaphor being told or a story. And you think, I know, like, I can't think of how I can metaphorically present this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to stop footage and just get, I'm going to type in a search of people playing chess or uh, some allegory that fits what I'm saying. And I'm just going to drop it in there. And viewers are, are not are not are not silly. They're, they're, they're going to see right through it. And dare I say that this is kind of feels like a low effort, high quantity, throw everything at the the YouTube algorithm audience and see if anything sticks. And as you're scrolling through this, Dan, like is this ever ever been posting at the similar cadence for a while now? Like a video every couple of hours. Uh, hard to say after a certain amount, but probably not. It seems yeah. like they... It's really 12, ramped up, 12, hasn't it? Four. Like in the last... Oh, yeah, so 12 days, four days, two days, and then... And then just a Just jump. today, they've gone absolutely insane with um, yeah. videos. It, it's... The problem is, too, like you mentioned not seeing Bobby Fischer, for example. If you're going to do, like, a, a mini documentary about something, like, put historical photos but they like go in and like do that work to like give people the visual representations that they need rather than like you said rob just using stock footage um it, it, people recognize when things are just not well crafted and true, it's gonna be really true difficult. crime notorious murders then a chess video yeah 
there are chess channels that do very well. You know, it, if you're going to be chess and poems, I, I, I would like to see more of this represented. So, yeah, I think there's a, a hundred things we can point out that are wrong. I do want to see the popular. Okay, so they did a, they upgraded a Tom and Jerry cartoon. Kangaroos. So, like, different animals doing different things. Channel focus. I think we should just yeah. bullet point the channel right there. Is who who do you want to make uh, content for, and how do, how do you want to make that content, and why do you want to make that content for the audience? Mm -hmm. And let's try and shift the pivot of AI and individual creativity, and try and push yourself more towards the individual creativity line. Yeah. I think that's the one thing I, I know when, when channels like this come up, there's a lot of conversation that all of a sudden happens in chat about AI and there's just so many of these channels now. And keep in mind, like the thing that separates channels that are using AI very heavily from some of you is that the fact that you are going to be building more of a community, like you're going to be building a some more solid connection with people. And that is the one thing that a lot of AI creators are not going to bother to do. So just keep that in mind. Um, and I, I do wish this channel luck. I think they've tried a lot of things. And I think some of these videos did feature what looked to be the actual creator at times as I was scrolling through. Uh, they just, they, they got to figure out channel focus. And yeah, I agree with all of Rob's advice just there a second ago. All right. We will pick a gaming channel. Which there are now 433. Okay, Claw, there are 433 gaming channels. Let's pick one. And while Claudia is doing that, just a quick update on our subscriber count. 1,820,000. Oh, wow. More. It's... Always more. All hail the ever power hungry YouTube like button. Let's throw a bone to number 328, another hopeful among a sea of gamers. Just don't forget who weathers this storm for you, Dan and Rob. Yep, it's me, good old Claw. All right. I've pulled up the channel and it broke. Hold on. <laughs> Everything broke on my end. I need to get rid of the claw. I need to put this back. Um, hang on. Where? Oh, they linked to the YouTube studio. So there's not a whole lot I can do there. Uh, no. I could try to pull up the name. Stanley, we're do having, a, brain alone, we're damn having it. a brainstorm session. <laughs> Did I stutter? I love the office. <laughs> Uh, sure. I, I pressed the wrong one. It was supposed to be this. This is the worst. <laughs> Such a good show. Okay. Rapsy SA. I do hope this is the correct channel. Uh, World of Gaming Wonders. Well, what are we seeing? Grand Theft Auto 5. Mm -hmm. E-Football. Grand Theft Auto 5. Cod Modern Warfare 2, Grand Theft Auto 5, Grand Theft Auto 5, Grand Theft Auto 5, Call, Call of Duty, Duty Warzone 3. So it's, what, 60%, 70% Grand Theft Auto 5, then other stuff. Uh, are these just cut scenes from the game? It looks like they're probably playing the game, but they, there's the premise is like... <clears throat> the start of the the heist right so it's like okay we're gonna do this heist in grand theft auto today hello guys welcome to my oh oi oi i i've never understood it i'm not okay i never mind i'm gonna go off if i if i talk about this i'm not gonna say anything and then the first two seconds it's asking for likes and subscribers listen personalities <laughs> that's all i have to say i think we just want it, like there Think about the gaming creators you're competing against, like that Roblox channel. People who got microphones and, and put their personality into it. I can play Grand Theft Auto myself. This is what I call off-the-shelf content. Travis is like a new thing I've been saying. Mm. Content that is basically, I bought Grand Theft Auto at the store. I put it in my PlayStation. I'm going to play it. Mm. That So there's that going on. So not a lot of transformation in like the actual way you're going to play Grand Theft Auto. But then also... That that insufferable grading AI voice, the the mm. one that we used to like really make fun of a lot before voice cloning tools became like a whole thing. So I I don't I don't want to go like full and negative, but this is listen. You've been doing this for a while. 
you're asking for some advice. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to just put some personality into the channel. Thank you, Dan. All, all done. Stop it. Get some help. <laughs> <laughs> That's somehow meaner than what I just did. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, though. You said it. <laughs> it's just one level under Savage, but it's good. It's good oh, enough. man. Um, a couple more super chats here. I just don't want to lose track of the super chats today. Uh, we got a new member. Um, um, Ibrahim? Ibrahim? Uh, Ibrahim, I think. A little bit. Dude, what happened uh, here? I've run effect, out of sound menu. effects this week. All right, no more new members then. Um, <laughs> tech time with Eric. Can't watch the whole live stream, but learn what we'll learn while I'm here. We do keep these up after the fact. If yeah, uh, rewind. Want to throw rewind. them up on double speed and you know, watch them again. Thank you for the super chat. And then Scrubby Games says, "Have you guys made any changes to the way one-on-one -on -one coaching works since December?" Yes, lots. I don't yeah. know what they are, but yes. There's actually always, a lot. Always iteration going on there. So the, the program is improving all of the time because it's been a learning experience from VideoQ's perspective as well. But yeah. Lots though. Yeah, for sure. I get tons of views on shorts, but not videos. Tons AI. I was I was keeping up there, but the, the end. I, I lost get tons it. of views on shorts, but not videos. Tons of okay, so it's that they get a lot of views on shorts, but not regular long stream videos. I don't know what the AI part is, but um, yeah, I mean, long form content. I mean, listen, it's all difficult. YouTube is not easy if you want to like be truly quote successful. It's not easy. It's a it's work. Um, you just gotta find something you're passionate about, and uh, you know, really do the research and really understand what people are looking for. Or you can always uh, just say, "I'm doing this for fun. I just want to do it the way I want to do it." And look, hats off to you. Have fun. Mm -hmm. all right those are our oh, super chats it? uh yeah so if you do any more super chats they'll probably be missed because we are getting close to wrapping up today but we have a few more things we can do uh, i just want to find that banner real quick um we used to have a banner that was like hey don't super chat anymore this one all right yeah yeah no more money please no money just send it to me directly yes 29.95 um, Non gaming channel 544. Okay, call 544. Pick a non gaming channel. Go, 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 go. It did pick up all of my go, go, goes, by the way. <laughs> Here we go. All right. All right. Keep your circuits on. I'm going. Let's throw a prayer to the almighty YouTube like button. Not that it'll help much. Oh. Channel 422 is your pick. What? Another non-gaming channel vying for attention. The futility of it all. But hey, at least Dan and Rob are having fun, right? Just don't forget who's doing all the heavy lifting here. What? You already picked 422. Pick a new unique number that you haven't picked before. Did they really? Are you serious? Yeah. It just gave me the same number as last time. <laughs> Bro, what a terrible AI. <laughs> fine, fine. Don't get your wires in a twist. Praise be to the omnipotent YouTube like button. Let's go with 103. Okay. Another hopeful coming up for review. And Dan and Rob better make it worth my while. I'm not just your random number generator, you know? No, you're not a very good one. I'll certainly say that. Random pick same number generator. <laughs> All right. It's JU Cube. Grab the link here. Oh, that's rich. You and Rob sit there with your fancy streaming gear while I crank out numbers nonstop. I'll have you know, it's a thankless job. But sure, it's all on poor old claw if something goes wrong. Now let's just get on with it. Praise the YouTube like button. Number 210 it is. Uh, thinks it's still one. I, sorry, 210. <laughs> I've certainly used that meme a lot this, this week. All right. We've gone uh, full circle down the we're back, channel. Back to Cubage. I told you there's a lot of these today. <laughs> I kept finding them. This isn't even one I found earlier. Um, all right, 51 subscribers. It's JU Cube. So what they can obviously do is go back to the very beginning of this live stream and look at a, another cubing channel that has had um, some degree of success already and check out their thumbnails, their ideas, the way they're presenting their content. That will be, I guess, suggestion number one. I, I like that they're doing different concepts. Uh, I I think they'll need to keep working on them a little bit. Is this the hardest scramble on the Rubik's Cube? I 
I like this thumbnail, but it just doesn't. It looks like a video game. It just doesn't speak to the cubing audience, I think. So there's like little things like that that they'll need to continue like with practice and and, uh, and time to kind of improve. And Travis, are you seeing anything about? Uh... Sorry, I was looking at one of the channels in the chat. Um, oh, a cubing channel. We get those quite often. So w are we just trying to figure out like what what worked, what, what doesn't, or? Yeah, we've each given uh, a quick tip. Uh, I mean, we've seen. I I would say go back and look at some of the tips we can download, but you would never be able to find it because I know I couldn't. Well, the um, beginning of the stream we did one. <laughs> oh, did you really? Oh, yeah, yeah. sweet! It's been go a cute beginning. Day. Of this but, this I is mean, all great advice, Travis. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Can, what it kind things, of makes you feel as if you've not been paying attention at all for the last hour, but do continue. <laughs> no, I totally haven't. I think it's, well, I wasn't here for the first hour. I, I was like asleep when you guys were live. Trust me when I tell you. Um, so for me, like whenever we talk to one of these channels, there's usually a couple of things we take away from it. Number one, um, routinely, they're really fast. I don't know if this guy is as fast as some of the other ones. I, I, I would have, I don't know. We'd have to look at them compared to the others. They're usually really, really fast. Uh, and they usually have unusual cubes. Sometimes they'll have like normal cubes, but a lot of the ones we've seen have had really crazy number of cubes or weird shapes, uh, even more so than a little pyramid there. Like that's kind of uh, kind of normal for me. Um, I, the ones we've seen like over the last couple of years have been really kind of crazy and super complicated. Um, but also, I don't know exactly how big the cubing community even is. I don't know if this is technically like the normal size of a cubing channel is there just not all that many people that watch and the people who do watch only watch like the top five or six channels but i would take a look at those top channels the ones that are doing really well in your niche and see what they're actually doing and see if you can either replicate a version of what they're doing or even do a quote challenge of one of the top creators for example if you have a creator that, that solves one of these in like three minutes and they are the top youtuber say i try to take the whatever challenge the name of that creator's challenge that's actually going to potentially find its way to the viewers of that other creator and maybe even get the attention of that creator to kind of look at your content. And it could be just a really quick win um, for doing something you're already kind of doing. Mm -hmm. One example here of like a thumbnail and title mismatch for the type of content you make is practicing worth it or not. And the there's no cube in the thumbnail at all. So this could have been a great title, I think, if it had a Rubik's Cube in the thumbnail. But that's just the kind of thing, like, this video is for people who already know your channel. And it's important when you make a video that you have to appreciate the fact that it's going out to new people, potentially. So every video you make is an entry point for a new viewer. And you have to remember that with every single upload. So by most popular, Dan? There's a couple of outliers here. Yeah. This one... The execution is so close. I think we just, th this is obviously a timer. We need those times like on the screen, you know, just like actually typed onto the thumbnail, kind of like before and after. Yeah. And then a busy, busy, busy background. Thanks to the mat that you're using. I think it would have been better to have a cleaner background in this case. And then could you play the second video? One of the most important you perm algorithms. I'm just curious of the video execution. Show you different algorithms for U perms. Let's get started. Oh, that was cool. But yeah. so, so here's the thing about that. That was actually done really well. And I'll, I'll tell you the part that I liked. He says, I'm going to show you something. And then he literally shows you, which I think is great, shows you that it's it's fast and that he completes it and that he actually seems to know what he's talking about. Uh, I actually really like that. And he has like, he has a cute little personality with a little, I want to show you this and, brrr, and boom, like, whoa, yo, let me see this. Um, I, I'd be interested in what the rest of this looks like. It's a short video, a minute and 20. Um, but it looks like it's one of their, their bigger videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not loading for me now, but, uh, that's really encouraging to see. And we like to go to the most popular videos just to kind of see what's worked in the past. So you can kind of like think about other types of videos you can make that are similar. So you can double down a bit. So hopefully um, we've given you some value there. Best of luck to JU Cube and uh, to all the channels that have submitted. We're we're getting close to the end here. Travis, is there something yep. you wanted to there tell is. everybody? So during the stream, I had AI make a song about our channel audit. Oh, oh great. We have three different versions. There's only like a minute. They're good songs. But <laughs> uh -huh. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Rob pick what version of it. Do you want to hear pop, rap, mm. or rock? Uh 
definitely pop for me. Pop. Please. Okay, so that Travis? one's called VidIQ Fever, Dan. So play the yeah. VidIQ Fever one. Okay, what do we do while it's playing? It's going to be awkward of us just staring here. Do, do we just dance? To... We could. We could dance. Okay. I have to put this up and then but there we go. Now you can hear it. Are you? You, what, you didn't say what we're going to do though. I don't want to uh, dance. We, we can dance. I'm, I'm all about dancing. Why not? Okay, that's perfect. All right. Late at night, sitting on my bed. Fired up my laptop, not a clue what lay ahead. Then I saw the names Rob, Travis, and Dan. Three wise men who hate to break to lend a hand. Feed it, feed it, give me all your tips. All your tips. And not it by the pros, gotta get those clicks. Get those clicks. Rob, Travis, and Dan, they're the YouTube gurus. Helping us grow, taking us to new viewers. Analyzing my channel with everything. They know the secrets, the algorithm behind. From thumbnails to tags, they've got the inside scoop. Giving us pointers, making sure we don't get moved. Don't get moved. Oh, it ended abruptly. Yeah, it ends abruptly. <laughs> no, God, please, no, no, no. Oh, AI, which industry will you kill next? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Times. That would have been Very great good. to play the outro on. Uh, any final thoughts? We love you all. We'll see you next week. All right.